The numbers just don't stop. They are growing every single day. The Department of Homeland Security now reporting that since the beginning of fiscal year 2022, more than half a million immigrant gotaways may have been released into the United States. Now, gotaways are people who were spotted crossing the border by border agents or a camera, but were not caught or processed by officials. And in the, months of, in the month of June alone, there were more than 200,000 apprehensions, of which 79,000 were processed and released into the United States. The report also reveals that in the two years combined, the department has tracked approximately 900,000 known gotaways. Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas is defending the department's handling of the border. Is the border safe? Now I was watching a news channel and they were talking about an invasion was happening and I got a little concerned. Look. <laughs> um, the, border, the border is secure. The border, um, we are working to make the border more secure. That has been a historic challenge. And the New York Times is reporting that in the past 10 years, migrant smuggling has turned into a multi-billion dollar international business. Last year, more than 5,000 5, people were arrested and charged with human smuggling. That's almost double what it was back in 2014. And according to Homeland Security Investigations, smuggling revenues today have soared to an estimated $13 billion compared to $500 million in 2018. Florida Congressman Brian Mass, a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, joins me. Good evening, sir. And let me talk first about this issue of uh, the border being secure by um, Secretary of Homeland uh, Mayorkas. I mean, uh, you know, look, I don't, I don't know what he, how he defines secure, but your thoughts on this border and, and how we can get it under control. I'll give you two thoughts on that. Number one, it is the first time that I've heard anybody associated with the border try to say that they were even pushing for security. You heard the interviewer ask that question, is it safe? That's what the, the folks that are dealing with the border and the administration always try to say. Well, we want a safe border. We want a humane border. They'll never actually say that they want a secure border. So that's a first, and maybe that's a little bit of progress on the front of the administration. The other thing that I would tell you is this. I sit with ambassadors from countries like Guatemala, and they will tell you flat out that whenever Mayorkas or Biden or somebody else gets on, starts talking about the border or policies, that it is a meal ticket for the cartels that run commercials that say, look what the American president is saying. See, we can get you into America. You can claim asylum. We'll get you in there. It will just cost you a couple thousand dollars. And that's how they're making billions. And that's what people in other countries, the ambassadors of other countries, will tell you flat out. All right. Well, Secretary Mayorka said that it's secure. We're getting more secure. We've got the New York Times, uh, which is not not uh, which is sympathetic to I think this administration in many ways. They they're having these staggering numbers. So I mean, so it's hard to understand. I mean, you know how how he can say it's secure and he isn't here to defend himself. But what can be done at this point to to make this border secure? You talk about Guatemala. What about Mexico? I mean, what are we doing with these countries to solve this problem? So there's very clear things that we can do. Number one, clarity on border policies. So if the ambassadors from Guatemala are saying this is a huge part of why people are leaving and what the cartels can tell people to get them to pay them, administration, get rid of your day one policies. Return to physically securing the southern border on all fronts, technologically securing the southern border. Make sure that you have policies in place like the Remain in Mexico policy and that you push for legislation moving forward through Nancy Pelosi, right, that's in charge of the House of Representatives, as Speaker of the House, that they'll move legislation that, that moves things like that permanently. Individuals seeking asylum will fall under these parameters. Don't give the cartels the ammunition to run ads saying how you can get into America, get a free meal ticket, some transportation around the country, and then disappear into the ether of the United States, never to be seen again, until they offer you some sort of uh, some sort of amnesty under Democratic administration uh, some point down the road. But it's not even just, I mean, the, the people who are getting here, the gotaways, I mean, there's, I mean, there's a lot of objection to that by a lot of people, but there are also many ways to the victims. They're paying a ton of money to these cartels, and, and it's, a, it's a huge, big business. And, of course, with the cartels, there's also drugs. We've got fentanyl coming through that border from China. We've got uh, former um, Attorney General Bill Barr was on this show, and he said that he would treat the cartel like ISIS. In, in your mind, do we have the wrong approach to these cartels? Are they, you know, should we be going into Mexico and getting these cartels? 
We should be working with Mexico to the extent that they will let our forces go in there and help destroy these cartels. Absolutely. I'm in support of that. Are the people that are paying the cartels victims of sort? Yes, they are. But my concern is for the victims of the United States of America that are paying their trauma care the moment they cross the border, their COVID vaccine the moment they cross the border, their bus transportation or train transportation, or the communities that they get dropped off in where they have to now attend those schools. The list goes on and on of those costs. So, yeah, I think you can make an argument that there is some, some victimization of those people. But my concern as a representative of the United States of America is 100% how uh, American people are being victimized by illegal crossings on our border or those that are essentially being invited in to, to gain asylum. I'm going to turn the corner to a controversy of whether Speaker Pelosi should go to Taiwan or not. Um, I realize that she's not your party. She's a Republican. She's a Democrat. But would you advise her to go um, in light of where this is now evolved with the White House apparently not wanting her to go there and China not wanting her to go there, yet do we cave to China on this? Under no circumstances should any American, especially the American that's third in line to the presidency, be told by Xi Jinping where they can travel to, what embassies they can correspond with, for lack of a better term, or anything else. And I would hope that we would see full support from the White House, though we are not, uh, for Nancy Pelosi's trip. I hope that she decides to bring former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. I think that would be a much better choice than bringing, say, Anton Blinken or somebody else. Um, but I don't think that's likely to happen in that case. But yes, I do hope that she travels. I hope that there that is a great success because there's a lot of things that need to happen there. I would say number one for Taiwan is this. Uh, their number one trading partner is also their biggest enemy. That is China. They face the same thing that everybody else needs to do, which is wean themselves off of China in order for the sake of national security. I hope that gets through to this administration, to Nancy Pelosi, to the leaders in Taiwan as well, and everybody else. Congressman Brian Mast, thank you, sir. Hope you come back. All the best. And